Hey there people, how's it going? This is Cross the Rubicon. I haven't made a video for a couple of weeks, but this morning I woke up to a phone call and it was from, well, a relative of a dear friend of mine. And uh, apparently I was in the media again this morning, Stuff News and the Christchurch Press, <coughs> which is one in the same, basically. And um, page six, my face all over it and they talk about you know white supremacy blah 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 and all, all, all most disgusting things they could write and, and they're not true they're basically not true it's a lie being based on a bloke who I cannot name or I'll get a $5,000 fine or six months in prison if I literally name this bloke this bloke has written a book of late, maybe six months, a year ago, and I'm not going to say the name of the book, but my name is on every other page of that book as basically New Zealand's most dangerous far-right white supremacist. What makes me laugh is that I was a prison officer here in Christchurch in New Zealand for 11 years. And I used to, well, basically lock up white supremacists, real white supremacists, who had swash stickers all over the necks and the heads, their baldy heads, who were in for murder and maiming people. <laughs> they're real white supremacists, they're real neo-Nazis. And yet, apparently I'm more dangerous than them. And this Nadine Porter, that was her maiden name, Porter, now it's Nadine Roberts of the Christchurch Press, decided to, to regurgitate this crap that was written when I went into this bloke's, without, can't mention his name, his workplace, after this bloke had, had literally terrorised myself and others for a few years calling us all sorts and getting us getting one bloke to lose his business and other people to to make these these people lose their jobs because of their political views and yet this bloke was a victim when I walked into his workplace to confront him about the things that he did to me he actually took a photograph of my house where I lived, just outside Christchurch. Put a photograph, a Google Earth photograph of my house. Then I had a wife and three young kids. And says this is where he lives, basically. But that's okay, that's, that's, that's perfectly acceptable in then New, uh, Jacinda's New Zealand, because he is of the far left. He's a Marxist, socialist, communist. So that's perfectly acceptable. But for me to express views about Jacinda's government at a time, and I did speak about mass migration into Europe at a time, in the earlier days of my YouTubing, and it is concerning. And, um, yeah, I criticised Jacinda. Like many other people, I mean, people know now what Jacinda did to New Zealand. People know. I was onto it in the very beginning, and so were many others. But I was very vocal about it. I was very open about my support of Donald Trump when he ran in 2016. That's what brought me to the attention of management at Sinlay, where I worked. Because, because I supported Donald Trump in America. I'm in New Zealand. I'm a, a British and a New Zealand citizen. I can't vote in America. But because I was a vocal supporter of Donald Trump. I was branded more or less as a white supremacist because in the media in New Zealand and the government in New Zealand and academia in New Zealand, if you support Donald Trump, this is in the early days, 2016 and 2020, you're a white supremacist. Honestly, I just can't understand the, the, the logic, but anyway, what happened, happened. and. Um, my biggest mistake 
that I'm still paying for is making the video about the Hey Pua Pua document. That was my biggest mistake. And uh, But was it a mistake? No, it wasn't a mistake. I told the truth of the Hey Pua Pua document. The Hey Pua Pua document is the New Zealand version of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And I got it a few years ago and I made, I made a video about it. And I told New Zealanders about this document who 98% didn't know nothing about. And because of that, a lot, lot more people, I had 16,000 subscribers at the time, a lot more people knew about it. And they started asking questions. Within two weeks of that, two, two three weeks of that video, what's her name? Uh, Judith Collins, she was the leader of the National Party at the time. She asked questions about it in Parliament, in Wellington. And that's when Rawiri Waititi stood up and did the haka to prevent her from talking. Filibustering is what they call it in America. To stop people talking, basically to talk over them. And he broke into, out into the haka to stop her talking about hey poo poo. And I believe, just quite possibly, that my video prompted her to ask questions about the hey poo poo document. Because Winston, Pe Winston Peters didn't even know about it at the time. And he was like the Deputy Prime Minister. <sighs> so, and because I made that video, and Judith Collins asked questions about it in Parliament, and she was shut down by Rawiri Waititi, who did the haka, and it was comedy gold because he is the most ridiculous looking man in New Zealand, the most ridiculous looking man to ever be in any parliament, anywhere, in any part of the world. And um, because of that, I made a video, a satire video, and I took the piss out of him. I mean, it was a satire video. But in New Zealand, I'll let you know now, in New Zealand, you're not to take the piss out of... Even marry elites like Rawiri Waititi. You can't take the piss. All I did was I bought a hat, a cowboy hat for ten dollars, and uh, I made a, a, a dog bone carving, which was representative of his greenstone um, carving around his neck because he won't wear a tie. And he's got no respect for Parliament, even though he's in Parliament. And I took the piss out of him. And um, marry party, including. Um, Rawiri Waititi, Matthew Tukaki, Ac academics, Maori academics from Auckland University, and Debbie Parker, and quite a few others. They came after me on social media and they basically threatened Sinlay and told Sinlay to sack me or else. That's what they did. And then the media came after me as New Zealand's premier white supremacist, all because I made a video, a satire video, of Rawiri Waititi. And I've been paying the price for it ever since. And again, today, from nowhere, completely out of left field, like I haven't made a video for weeks. There I am, big full spread, page six apparently in the, in the, in the press, the Christchurch Press, all over stuff. Just regurgitated old stuff because probably there's nothing in the news. And Nadine Porter, who is a liar, Nadine Roberts or Robertson, whatever, who's a liar, a deceiver, a propagandist for the government, brought it all up again and lied over and over again. I went to the Christchurch Press building. This would have been two and a half years ago. Two years, two and a half years ago because of what something Nadine Porter at the time, Porter, now Roberts, wrote. And I challenged the editor in the press building. Carl Bromley came with me. Adam Nuttall came with me. A couple of others came in and our, our cameras were rolling. And she wouldn't come downstairs. And it was Kamala Heyman. She was the editor. She was the editor. So I wanted to speak to the editor because they keep saying that they approached Lee Williams for comment, but he was unavailable. No one ever approached me for comment. So I went down there 
And I said, well, I'll give you a comment now. I'll give you, a, I'll give you an interview and tell you why I do and why I say what I do. And she said to me, this was Kamala Heyman. She said, not a chance. That's what she said. So no recourse for me. And yet they're writing stuff over and over and over and making me into something that I'm not. They made this bloke who I went to visit in his workplace to challenge him for the things he's been doing to me and he became the victim. He was terrified and blah blah blah. It was all rubbish orchestrated by the media. The government owned media to make me something I'm not. I'm still paying the price, still today. And uh, but this is where New Zealand is. And you know what? I still keep on saying what I'm saying because I know it's the truth at the end of the day. Will I change? Yeah, I've slowed down a bit. I've took a bit of a back seat for my own sanity. But it doesn't mean I still don't believe what I say. And I still support Donald Trump. If I lived in America, I'd still live in the red state. I support Brexit. I don't support what the media say about Ukraine and Russia. I don't support... Basically, rule of thumb is, whatever the media say, probably the best thing is to believe the opposite is true instead. But, but New Zealand is so corrupt. The government are so corrupt. It's not going to get any better. And uh, national, it's not going to get any better at all. Chris Luxon's a weed, a wimp. And... Um, He's a he's a an internationalist. He's a globalist, globalist who's desperate to get into well, to, to fly to Davos every year to meet Klaus Schwab. Desperate, and so is David Seymour. They're desperate to be in the club. <laughs> Wonder what it means to get in the club. What they have to do. What they have to see. And they'll do whatever Klaus Schwab tells them to do. And I say things against that. And uh, I call it out. And I've been calling it out for a while. And, um, yeah. Okay, there's a bit of a mixed bag there. <sighs> but it stinks what was in the press this morning. I tell you, it knocked me. It knocked me a little bit. Because I'm just thinking, oh my God. These people are never going to let it go. Is Nadine, Nadine Porter, N Nadine Roberts, Nee Porter. Is there any consequences for these people? Is there any consequ con con consequences for... Um, Kamala Heyman? Is there any consequences? Is there any consequences for Rawiri Waititi and Debbie Packer for doing what they did to me with Sinlay? Is there any consequence? No. They used their, their privilege as being MPs to destroy my life. They earn a lot more money than what I do. Any comeback from me? No. Oh, nothing. If I was in America, I could have sued them for millions. But here, no. And so, it, unfortunately, we've got a mentality in New Zealand that a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, suck it up, suck it up. You know, if this would happen to you, lady or fella, you would have topped yourself by now. <laughs> suck it up, eh? So when you open your mouth and tell the truth and you get punished for it, even people on your own side want to destroy you. It's sick. It's a sick, sick, sad world. And, well, it's sad here. And it's, you know, it's... It's similar in other places, but New Zealand's particularly bad. Because it's small, insular thinking, maybe. I don't know. But so... There's, there's a new video coming up, and I'm going to tell you about something that happened in the prison quite a few years ago that I highlighted nobody knows about it I highlighted and it ended up in the murder of a woman in Christchurch and the rape of her daughter that if the prison managers at the time who were corrupt in Christchurch men's prison if they would have listened to what I said, the information I had a girl wouldn't have died at the hands of this 
horrendous human being and a daughter wouldn't have been raped and destroyed for life. But hey, anyway, I thought I'd tell you that. I share that with you. And uh, nothing's equal in New Zealand. If you tell the truth, you're on the outer. If you're corrupt, if you're a psychopath, you're on the inner. Are you in the in club? Okay. That's all I'm going to say. This is Cross the Rubicon. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, share this video everywhere, and I am going to make a video. I've decided today that I'm going to make a video about something that happened in the prison a few years ago, and it's going to be quite shocking. Will I name names? Probably not. Because, well, it'd be easy to sue me, wouldn't it? But I can't sue them. But even the prison system in New Zealand is corrupt as buggery. Christchurch is corrupt, but up north are even worse. But anyway. Okay. See you later.